today is August 14, 2009, and during this summer break I've been working with a group of students to remodel the control lab, an instrumentation and control technology program at BTC, Bellingham Technical College. So I'm just going to give you a quick tour of our newly remodeled lab. Here we have the control panel, which we've had here since the original setup of the lab in 2006. And uh, here's where we have all the panel mounted instruments, chart recorders, Siemens 352, 353 controllers. We have uh, as a paperless chart recorders, also some HMI panels for PLCs, and some other loop controllers. These are uh, the solo controllers uh, marketed by Automation Direct. They're connected, the uh, solo controllers anyway, through a Modbus network. Some of the Siemens Moore controllers are networked uh, via Ethernet, which is why you see IP addresses here. So we have ways of networking our process controllers together. Over here, the other part of the control room area, we have our workstations. Uh, some of which link up to the uh, Siemens controllers. This particular workstation here has the uh, Siemens eyewear program that links up with the 353 controllers. The other workstations are mostly dedicated for our Delta V DCS made by Emerson. Now coming over to the process area of the lab, this is the north side and you can see we've replaced a lot of the original channel strut racks that we had originally set up from 2006, we've taken most of this stuff out and replaced it with standard pallet racking. And onto this pallet racking we've attached uh, vertical pieces of two inch pipe for mounting instruments. We've also placed control valves at the bottom of the racks and electrical enclosures to marshal all the wiring. So each one of these racks now has electrical enclosures, terminal blocks, and cables uh, dedicated for control loop wiring. That's been the biggest upgrade to the lab, is the replacement of the old channel strut uh, metal with the new pallet racking. It's a very unconventional use of pallet racking, but it works spectacularly well for our purposes here. Going to the far end, the north side of the lab, we have our main junction box, junction ba box number one, which we've been using uh, for quite a while now to marshal wiring between the control panel and our field instruments. We also have our north DCS node. This again is an Emerson Delta V system. We've had this installed uh, since uh, 2007, and it's also been used as a control platform for instruments we put in the field area. Also something we've had in the lab since around 2007 or 2008 is a local pneumatic control panel. In this case, we're using a series of Foxborough Model 130 pneumatic controllers because these things are still used in the industry, and my students need to see how they work. So th this is the north end of the lab. Previous to the 2009 remodel, we had, I'd say, about six crowded workstation areas. I say crowded for a class of 24 students. It was workable, but uh, not the most ergonomic. Now, having installed the pallet racking in each of these bays, instead of a single wall of uh, unistrut-style metal strut, we now have the pallet racks with two sides that we can work on. We've expanded this realistically to uh, seven or possibly eight workstation areas for students to build their labs. But most importantly, we've expanded this capacity greatly in the south end of our lab by taking away what used to be a bunch of workbenches that pretty much only got used for book reading and activities like that. We've replaced the workbenches with a lot of pallet racks here. Uh, we have eight spacious workstation areas here in the pallet racks. And just like the racks on the north side of the lab, they all have two inch vertical pipes for mounting field instruments. They have electrical enclosures. Each electrical enclosure is labeled, identified, and equipped with terminal blocks and dedicated uh, cabling for signal wires. Also, we have another DCS node. Here we have our second Delta V Emerson system. It's uh, set up and all ready to use, or almost, I'm in the process of doing some wiring here. Our dedicated field cabling comes in here, and students will connect individual twisted pairs to the particular I.O. channels they need to build their loops. Now for those that are not familiar with how my students do lab work here, as you can see, we do not use pre-built simulators uh, or trainers. What we do is we build working instrument loop systems starting with this as an infrastructure. So students have a place to bolt instruments. They have panels in place to pull wires to and to marshal their wiring. And they also have control systems like the DCS and like the control panel over here that they can use as um, control devices for their loops. But they actually build the loops. They mount the field instruments. They pull the wires to the controllers or the DCS. 
they configure the controllers of the DCS, they run wires to the control valves, to the IDP transducers, and they create working loops. In some cases, we actually build working processes here. We can hang vertical pipes that store water. We can uh, install small heaters for temperature control processes. We can mount small uh, chambers for air pressure control processes and things like that. So we can actually build working physical processes. Most of the time, we're just wiring up instruments and more or less simulating uh, how a process would act. But the presence of an infrastructure like this, a series of racks, conduit, and enclosures, makes for a very realistic learning environment when students go to build their working loops. So, like I said, grand tour of our lab here. I apologize for some of the mess. I've still got piles of wire and buckets and a few other items I need to clean up yet before the school year starts. But this is our new remodeled look, summer 2009, at Bellingham Technical College, Instrumentation and Control Technology.